is a is a is a very special time for me. It means a lot um, because it's Multiple Sclerosis Awareness Month. Um, just to give you a, a, a brief background story about myself and and explaining what the what the disease is. Six years ago, I was actually in a car accident. I was coming home from work and somebody t boned me, hit my head, I hit my head, and actually missed oncoming traffic and hit a pole. I woke up, you know, a couple hours later, and I was laying in a hospital room. Um, guys, given I was I was alive. You know, little minor bumps and bruises, but I was alive. But during the bumps and bruises and just going through the treatment, you know, I was sent to have an MRI just to make sure, you know, my concussion that I was having wasn't, you know, more severe than that. And it uncovered um, me having um, multiple sclerosis, which is MS. Um, the moment the doctor told me that I had MS, I was kind of like, well, what is it? You know, what I mean, you hear something like that and you immediately become um, numb. You know, I mean, a lot of thoughts start to run through your mind because you don't know what it is. But just, you know, having him explain to me what it was and, you know, what it would do to my body. Um, at that moment, I had to come up with the with the understanding of how is it? What am I going to do? Am I going to become a victim of it or am I going to become, you know, the quote unquote spokesperson for anybody in and around me that's going through any trials and tribulations? And that's what I chose to do. Um, some of you guys know, you've been here for a couple of weeks now, you know, you're, you're an active member of the group. Um, uh, we are going through the, um, Sunday night wind down fitness challenge. Um, I say that to say, um, again, T is a, a, a very good friend of mine, been together forever. Right. Coming up, I was always a, a heavy kid, um, played football from junior high school, all went to high school and then even a little touch of college um, didn't work out, but I maintained that weight. I actually was started out at 370 pounds. Um, I was at my biggest, and that was in 2010. Just something clicked in my head in 2011 said, hey, I want to do something different. Just follow me a little bit because it's going to make a little bit of sense. Um, 2011, I started this weight loss journey um, from January to July. It's seven months. My birthday is actually July 8th, so I normally take a trip um, on my birthday for two weeks. Every year I go out of the country, and I wanted to look a little different than I looked previous years. Going back, looking on pictures, just wanted to do a little something different. It, it, it changed my life from January to July because I actually lost 80 pounds in that in that time frame by just working out, eating right, and being healthy. I say all that to say 14 months later from my journey in January of 2011, to here now, May of 2012, I lost a total of 200 pounds. The reason why I shared my weight loss journey with you is that helped me to possibly survive and not have stronger symptoms in MS. I was very, very active. I ran marathons. I actually still do run marathons, um, eat right, train and condition my body to the max. I used to be the most laziest person in the entire world. If you know anything about living up north, you know it's a corner store on every corner. And where we lived at in Southwest is a corner store on every corner, literally. You got the Chinese store, you got the poppy spot. You know what I mean? You got a store that sells everything. I used to live in the middle of the block. This is how lazy I was. I used to live in the middle of the block. I jumped in my car just to go maybe two feet, get a cheesesteak platter, jump back in my car to go another two feet, to go in my house to eat, lay down and be lazy. Right, we got fast food maybe five, six times a day. Breakfast, snack, lunch. After after work, going to get something else. We would go in the house about one, two o'clock in the morning. And you know, McDonald's only served large meals back then. So everything was large. I'm getting quarter pound of meals extra large. So I was killing my body. If it wasn't for me changing, transforming my life and changing my diet, my MS symptoms would have been much worse than they are today. Now, just to let you know um, what MS is, it's a condition. It's a, actually my immune system. And everybody knows your immune system is your, your internal medicine, right? It helps ward off um, infections, diseases, colds. You know, they always say a healthy immune system is, you know, a great thing to have. 
right? And especially right. we've been we've been hearing that so much often now that corona corona's around this flu season, whatever. Having a healthy immune system is vital to being healthy. Well, just think of um how we all, anybody have had a headache that may have lasted two or three days and has and it killed them to the point where they couldn't move out of bed. My immune system is actually attacking my body instead of the opposite. My immune system is a problem for me. Where my immune system is supposed to be working to help me is actually working in reverse. So my immune system is attacking organs, is attacking muscles, is attacking my nervous system. I have lesions on both my brain and also my spine from having MS. Um, there's multiple stages of MS. Um, I'm right now in stage, I'm on borderline stage two, borderline stage three, with there being anywhere from five to six, if you ask a doctor, stages. Um, some people have no symptoms. Some people have symptoms. Some people wheelchair bound. Some people die from it. Um, I just thought always growing up, I always thought, you know, your parents tell you aches and pains. Oh, you're just getting older, oh, growing pains. Or, you know, when you start getting older, oh, that's arthritis. Or that's just me getting um, old. I would say if you ever have a pain or an uh, ache or a pain that lasts longer than it should, I would actually go and get um, a second opinion and not self-diagnose yourself because it could be something that major. And if this, if I didn't have this accident, um, I might have been well off. I mean, worse off than I am now. Mm -hmm. If I didn't change my 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 eating habits and my work regimen, workout regimen, I could be a little bit worse off. Um, each and every day, um, some people say I don't know how you do it, but I wake up in pain. Right. Just think of a three hundred pound person sitting on your back, and you're trying to get up out the bed each and every day. That's how I feel each and every day. Um, and some days that are better than others. And there's some days that it takes me at least 45 minutes just to get out of bed and start my day. And a lot of y'all know me out there. A lot of y'all know I got, I can live by the mantra of can't stop, won't stop. I just, nothing can hold me down. And y'all like, how do you even go on and do what you got to do? It's because I got to, um, I can't become a prisoner of this disease. I can't become a prisoner of my situation. I got to conquer it because if I don't then I'm only going to fail myself um MS has a lot of symptoms if you know anything about fibromyalgia lupus um a lot of those diseases that you hear about common diseases if you know if you don't know what MS is but you've heard somebody say they got fibromyalgia or lupus or something like that they kind of like have some of the similar symptoms um, I do have what is called flare-ups. The flare-ups can land me in a hospital. The flare-ups can land me in bed. The flare-ups could, could debilitate me for hours, or sometimes it has been days. Now that I sit back and look, about, look on it, um, maybe the, the headaches that I got or get um, can be closely attributed to that, because I used to have headaches, or I still do, where I get a headache from anywhere from a couple of hours to a couple of weeks. I know sometimes in um, May and October, when the season starts to change, I know I prepare myself. I get myself mentally prepared, physically prepared for that because I can go anywhere from May to maybe mid-June with a headache, consistent headache. Um, on a scale of one to 10, it could be a 14 or 15. That's how intense it is. But again, I still got to go through life. I still got to get up and get it. Um, because if I don't, I feel like I'm going to become a prisoner of my situation and not be and 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 let it do more damage to me than the actual disease is doing. Now, mm -hmm. L. Jones said, "Are you still in a relaxed remit stage?" Yes. And yes. my cousin said they told her the same thing. And didn't believe her until she had a flare up in 2014. Flare up in 2014. Yeah, you know, it's funny because, especially now, and I see a lot of it now, and it's disheartening. Um, and and I understand it though, 
Um, if you followed me from a couple of times that I've been on a show, or you follow Sunday Night Wanda, then you see if I've been on a show several times, and I actually spoke about um, COVID-19 and thinking that I had the COVID-19 virus at that time, I didn't have it. But I experienced a lot of the symptoms that came with it. And that was back in 2000, beginning of 2020, um, when we had a show back in May. I said that I wasn't actually was in and out of the hospital a couple of times because I was having um, symptoms. <clears throat> I would say now, because COVID-19 is such a big thing and such an unknown that doctors misdiagnose things all the time. They look over things because they're scared of what COVID was. And, and that was prior, I think that was before the vaccine and them getting needing to get the vaccine. Um, I remember going to the hospital with severe chest pains. And this was probably a couple of months ago before the vaccine came out. I went with severe chest pains, I actually passed out at work. They took me to the hospital, um, thought I was having a heart attack or something was going on. Um, I remember sitting in the emergency room and the doctors gave me a COVID-19 test, came back negative. And this was uh, this year, this is actually 2021, gave me a COVID test. The nurse said, oh, um, you don't have COVID. They actually tested me three times. Um, you're, you're, you don't have COVID. Instead of her running other tests, they sent me, they discharged me and said, you're fine. The one lady, and as I was walking to the bathroom, because I actually was in the hospital from 11 o'clock that afternoon to maybe about seven, eight o'clock that evening, I, I overheard the doctor and nurse talking and says, oh, he's just here for pain meds. Pain meds. He must want to get high or something like that. That's how they look at us. That's how they look wow. at us, us sometimes being a young black man, not knowing other other things that I got going on with my body, you know, um, not knowing, oh, he's just here for pain medicine. He, he wants Percocets, he wants this, he wants that. No, I just want to know why I'm feeling the way I am. If you know, if anybody, people in the comments know me, it takes everything to get me to go to the hospital so if I go to the hospital, it's something wrong because I know of all the things that I got going on with. Look, now mm -hmm. we got a, a question here. Mm -hmm. all right. How old was you when you were diagnosed as MS running your family? Sharita, I was, um, how old am I now? 40, 34. I actually was 34 uh, when I got diagnosed with MS. Um, oh, it's funny because, um, the moment that I found out I had MS, I called my mom because that's the first thing that we do is we call our mom. And I was like, mom, I just I found I got MS. And she was like, wow, because she thought, her doctors had thought at one time that she had MS. She has the MS treat, wow. right? I have a cousin who's my first cousin, my aunt, my mother's son. My mother's sister's son, he has MS as well. I am the oldest grandchild of my grandmother's children. Um, so just like they say, it can skip a person. My grandmother doesn't have it. My mother has the treat. I have it. My little cousin has it, but my sister doesn't. Everybody's clear. So it, um, is it hereditary? Could it be, a, could it be something that's in the genes? They don't know. Um, but it could be a, it's a possibility. Another thing too, I gotta be very careful is well, my father's side of the, of the equation is they have a lot of headaches and they have a uh, brain aneurysms. I don't want no, I'm not saying this because I want nobody to feel um, sorry for me because I am i don't play a victim. Um, right. Tough dude, whatever's thrown my way, I just handle it. Uh, maybe seven years ago or actually four years ago, I was diagnosed with an aneurysm. So I'm dealing with both multiple sclerosis and an aneurysm in my brain. So I'm dealing with a number of different things. Could have had it been, could one could have came from the other, other, it's a possibility, but you know, it is what it is. So yeah. um, I have one question. Uh huh. I'm going to answer Jamie. Did, your cousin did you ever have Jamie. any kind of, after you were diagnosed? And, you know, most people are going to do their research when they're diagnosed with something because you want to know everything about it. Yes. Did you realize that maybe you had some earlier symptoms that you ignored? And maybe that way, you know, 
let people know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, great question. You know, being a man, right? We, we, especially being a young man, we feel like we are invincible. We just, we are, and this is no fault of anybody else's. It's just how life goes. We are taught to um, mask our emotions, kind of deal with status quo, go with the flow. If you got an ailment, just suck it up, deal with it, because you still got to go on through life and you still got to do what you got to do. Um, a lot of times we looked upon as, especially in this new culture nowadays and what's going on with um, the opioid addiction, they think that when you come in there saying something hurts that you're looking for drugs or you're, you're a pill popper because, you know, instead of having something real, an, a real issue that you, you do drugs or something like that. Yes, I honestly think a lot of the pains that I was experiencing in my 30s was a direct reflection of this. Another thing too was I played football. I played football since I was a a young a young kid. And since I was like about ten, I played organized football. Um, I know the CTE thing and this brain thing comes up a lot. You know, severe hits to the head. Could that be a reason why chemical imbalances that push a certain thing? Yes, I you know. I ran my head into other people's head. You right. know, I ran my head at full force into people's bodies to slow them down since I was 10. And that didn't stop until I was probably about 19 because I started college at 17. And I went to, to you know, a D1 school, wound up tearing my rotator cuff, which is the reason why I didn't, you know, make it on that sense. But since, you know, since 10 years old to maybe about 17, when, when we stopped playing high school football, I was a very active um, football player. So, uh, and, and I was a big guy. So I wasn't, I was getting hit in the head often. I would go home with concussions and mm. just think nothing of it. Just think it was a headache, you know? Mm. So. That's interesting. Okay, I think um, I got she asked the question now, are you planning on getting a vaccine? I actually had my, my second vaccine today. Actually, um, was I am fully vaccinated now, which is a um, which is an oh. amazing accomplishment. Today was my my last shot, um, from getting it. And I would Dude. say, if there's anybody out there on the fence, anybody that's contemplating on getting it or not getting it, I want to say this. I know there's so there's so many misconceptions about the vaccine and how fast it was, it was created, and it's 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 a way for the government to funnel money and to these big drug companies and things like that. That's all well and good. The reason why I got the vaccine was for one and for two reasons. One, if it's going to give me opportunities to further my life, I'm gonna do it. But then two, I also got to remember that I am dealing with two people who gave birth to me that are dealing, that are in their golden years, my mother and my father. Me being reckless, out and about around other people who are not vaccinated or going out partying or having a good time and then going around those people, I understand that my reckless behavior could be the, the trigger to them getting a disease when they've been protecting themselves. Right. So even if I don't do it, even if I, if I don't do it for selfish reasons about saving myself, I'm doing it to save them, right? Because I would kill me if, even if I was, even if I was one of these reckless people going out here in bars and going to parties and being around people and not, and just doing what I wanted to do and never experiencing any symptoms, I realized that I got people that I am around who I love that I could be a detriment to. And I think people don't understand it. They don't get that concept. So yes, the vaccine was created quickly, but none of us was around when polio was created and the mumps and they had vaccines for that, but we got to take our precautions and get and get um, immunized in order for us to, be, to go to school and do the things like that. Mm -hmm. If we can sit up here and say, this vaccine is unsafe, then I, then, I, then I pity the fools that are 
drinking alcohol on a, on a consistent basis. That's no good. Those things cause liver cancers and, and, and deteriorate our, our home lives, right? We got people that experiment with drugs and they know they're not supposed to, but they still do it because that's what they choose to do. Right. So if you can go out here and kill yourself with things that you know is not, or go out here and indulge yourself in things that are not good for you, there's a reason why this vaccine is out here and every doctor and nurse has it, has gotten it. Mm -hmm. All um, right. Mm -hmm. Any uh mm -hmm. any last questions before we move on? We got any last questions, Karen? Um I think I want uh, one question I want to ask. Are you on any maintenance medications? <laughs> Great question. Yes. Um I'm supposed to take nine pills two to three times a day. That's mm -hmm. mm. That could be very depressing. Right. Right. So so you're not taking it? I take something mm -hmm. um, when when necessary. Right. Um, I am on gotcha. um very minimum pills do I take. And and the pills that I take every day is an allergy pill. I take a couple of Tylenol.